Hi, I'm Chucky. And I'm your friend to the end. Heidi ho <laughs> Hi, I'm Sam. And I'm Max. And this is Movie Nostalgia, where we give you an honest review of the movies we've meddled with so mischievously over at Maybe Movies. And this time, just in time for the start of spooky season, <laughs> we will be looking at Child's Play. This is the 1988 Tom Holland directed horror film starring Catherine Hicks, uh, Chris Sarandon, Brad Dourif, Jack Colville, and introducing Alex Vincent as Andy, the little boy in desperate need of a friend till the end. <laughs> this was uh, one of our Holloway, Holloway? Halloween? Uh, Halloween. Halloween. Yeah, Halloween in Hall Holloway. No, 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 no. This was one of our Halloween matchups <laughs> from two years ago, along with our last review, which was Toy Story. And as always with some of these, some of these older ones, I'm trying to rack my brains as to, to, to when I saw this. And I think this is one of those ones because I was very kind of late coming into my horror. Oh, right. Okay. So okay. I don't think I saw this until I, I was living on my own. And I'm pretty sure it was when I first moved back to England. So that would have been about 93. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. As a kid, most of my interest in horror was more literary horror than, than film horror. Oh, right. And it wasn't until I sort of moved away and, and, and I kind of... Sort of Saw a few other bits and pieces and kind of developed a bit of a love for it from, love for it from there. Uh -huh. It was when I came back to England and somebody recommended it to us if you hadn't, if I hadn't seen it. I think also I was turned off by it because I kind of looked at it and went, eh, murder doll. Eh. Oh, okay, fair enough. And, and then I saw it and I was like, oh, actually, th th there's a lot more to this than what I thought. And I think a lot of it was more th the technical aspects of it. Oh, right. Well, like the animatronics and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a weird one to say this about a horror film. I was never particularly... Uh, particularly, It didn't scare me as a horror film. But part of the film is, is feeding into that fear of children of your toys coming to life. Mm -hmm. So play nice. That never bothered me as a kid. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. But, yeah, just the technical achievements of the film was what really was like, oh, actually. All right. And also just the sheer insanity of it. Of the of the concept of it. Oh right, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's uh, my my version is is it, my journey was a little bit kind of the opposite of yours. Um, okay, I saw it as soon as it came out on video in the UK, so late eighty eight, early nineteen eighty nine. I had been looking forward to it for a while. I was a big reader of Fangoria, and so I'd been reading articles for months. And obviously that was months leading up to the US release. So obviously it was a bit later before it came over to England. So I had plenty of time to get a bit excited about it. The special effects guys, the interviews with them talking about everything and the director talking about a new horror icon and all of the detail and the stuff they'd gotten into. Mm -hmm. I was really excited about that and I was looking forward to a new pop potential franchise, you know, a la Nightmare on Elm Street or, you know, uh, Friday the 13th sort of thing. Then when I got around to watching it, I, I found myself gently disappointed. Part of it is the same thing that you said, that I just wasn't afraid of Chucky. Yeah. Also, it wasn't as uh it wasn't as bloody as uh the interviews i'd read had implicated and things like that but ultimately i felt like it was a, a an interesting concept that got wasted in places yes yeah well, uh, apparently the original cut of the film was two hours oh you see that i probably could have gotten around there's early portions of the film where there's implication as it is it all in his head and it never really gave that room to breathe. And no. I found that was an interesting aspect of it that just got shoved aside almost as soon as possible, really. Yeah, that's the thing. That's one of the things with the films. It, 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 it very much... It doesn't waste any time. It doesn't really have give itself room to breathe. No, it doesn't in a lot of ways, which is a shame. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, I think that there was room there to see more with uh, Maggie. Yeah. With her friend and things like that before, you know... And, and, and it's... Which is a shame. I, mean, I don't know. I, I don't know whether uh, whether there is a director's cut of it. I've not heard of one. I've never heard of one being being anywhere. No. But obviously, yeah, as you mentioned, though, we did forget to mention um, Kevin Yeager. Oh yes, yeah, good old Kevin Yeager. Yes, another one of the eighties classic guys. Which apparently, about two three years after this, him and Catherine Hicks got together, and certainly because there's some interviews on there that were done in about two thousand and eight, and they were still together. What Kevin? Yeah. Oh, right, okay. Oh, well, that's interesting. Regardless, I mean, it did, uh, did do pretty well. So it was made on a budget for about, of about 10 million. 
and took just shy of 45 million worldwide. Well, that's not too shabby. No, you can't. It's not too shabby. For the, um, you know, for the late 80s, it's pretty good going. Yeah. But it's a, it's an interesting one. Um, I mean, if you've never seen it or you've never heard of it, this is the story of Andy and his mum. Um, what's his mum? Kate? Thank you. I think. Something like that. But Andy's a little boy who's got a fascination with this new doll that's come out, the, uh, the good guy's doll. Yes. Uh, meanwhile, elsewhere across town in Chicago, the Salt Lake Strangler? Shore, uh, Lake Shore Strangler. Lake Shore Strangler, sorry. Played by Brad Dourif. Manages to get himself in a spot of bother with the police. And thanks to some conveniently thrown in voodoo magic. Fucking voodoo magic, man! <laughs> It becomes Chucky the doll. And I mean, even that, apparently, that was a, a late addition to the script. What? Do you mean the voodoo? Yeah. Because the concept that they'd had for it was that Chucky was supposed to have been a manifestation of Andy's id. And the original design for of for the good guy's doll was that they were supposed to essentially have their own vascular system. So if the doll got damaged, it would bleed. And then the kids would have to go and buy bandages for the doll and stuff like this as a way of keeping the corporate machine running. And apparently in the original concept, he does basically like like a bit like a Blood Brothers thing. He cuts his finger and mingles his blood with the dolls. And that's what brings the doll to life. Oh, well, that was a very different concept. Yeah. <laughs> design. But yes, and uh, he comes into the possession of Andy and... Terrible things start to happen, and who's going to believe a little boy when he says his doll comes to life? Indeed, indeed. As a 80s horror classic, it's definitely worth having a look at. What we get of the story is, is interesting enough, and I know you were saying earlier that it was more the sequels that kind of got you more invested in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was something that grew in me over time, and it was the sequels that recontextualized earlier stuff to, to, to give it a freshness for me that that changed it when I was initially there I was like eh, I'll watch it but um oh, I'll watch the next one but um you know I was never totally enthusiastic about it but uh Bride of Chucky was the one that converted me in the end it's because it's the same uh, no, obviously not Tom Holland but it was the writer I can't remember his name uh, but he did all of them didn't he the original series he, yes he, he, he kind of funded most of them didn't he Don is it Don or Dan Mancini Don Mancini Don I think Mancini it is. yeah 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 I've, no, I've, I've seen this one I've seen the second one and I think that's it well, I've got them all at home if you ever want to watch them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I did find out a nice, lovely little piece of trivia, which I think is fantastic. In preparing for the role, Chris Sarandon did um, a bit of a ride-along with some of the um, Chicago cops. Okay, yeah. And obviously kind of scared the crap out of him, you know, just sort of having to see what they had to deal with. Yeah. But it did make me chuckle, because you, you kind of think you're a criminal, and the cops turn up, and they've brought Jerry Dandridge with them. <laughs> 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 yeah, that is that is one interesting thing about the movie for me. It was the first time I saw Chris Sarandon as uh, a good guy. Yeah. Every yeah. time I'd seen him previous to that, he'd always been a villain of some sort. Absolutely. I, I, so much to the point that I really genuinely expected that somehow the cop would turn out to be a bad guy in some uh, way, you know. Yeah. So that that was one thing that kept me pleasantly surprised the very first time I watched it. Definitely, definitely. And he does it, again, as he always does, he does a very good job. Oh, he's a great actor, yeah. Yeah. So, again, you know, if you're, if you're looking to complete your, your watch library of, of 80s horror, then this is definitely one worth checking out. Again, it is, I, and I think by the sounds of it, Sam as well kind of agrees that it's definitely one to watch for its technical merits as opposed to for its horror chops, shall we say. Yeah. I mean, there is a lot of work that's gone into it, and even little subtle things like how... They had different doll's heads for how he character changes through the film. So it goes from the very squeaky clean plastic doll at the start to becoming slightly more jaded and almost more human. I'm trying to remember. If I remember rightly at the time, there's something like they had like six different models of Chucky. Yeah. Of the different stages of him. Exactly, yeah. And that's just the animatronic ones, not counting the other ones that were used as props and things like that. So there were so many Chuckies on set. Yeah, those, they, they, they had a crew. I mean, the, the crew was something like nine people. Yeah, it doesn't total. surprise me, yeah. You know, because um, you had the, the physical movements and then the facial expressions. and Yeah, including there was a guy on. with like a headset up, so whenever he moved his jaw, it would move the jaw. 
Oh, yeah. And things yeah. like this. But there was one of the dolls that they had. Um, it's one of the ones where he's kind of like just writhing on the floor. Yeah. And they'd um, put a, a drill battery in it. Uh-huh. From like a household drill, which was linked to the limbs, so to give him the kind of juddering effect and things uh, like oh, that. Oh, right. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so again, you, you can't fault the work and the effort that went into it. So, it's worth a look, but, well, I don't know about you, for, but for me, I, I, I'm going to give it a one... I'm going to give it one and a half, I think. Because you must be reading my mind, because I was trying to figure out how I was going to represent one and a half. One and a half, like that. There we go. Just, just the top. <laughs> one and a half. Again, one for the technical <laughs> merit and, and half for, for for the story as well. Again, it would have been interesting to see the full... I would appreciate seeing the two-hour version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if it still exists. So, if you're watching, there is a market for it. There's a few of us out there who would be very interested to see the Mancini cut... <laughs> I don't do it do it but as we have been dealing with all things things related to toys and kids stuff I think maybe another Disney I think for the next one but I think we need to go Disney dark Disney dark so dark it's like falling into a black hole Ooh, uh. we'll see you next time as always guys TTFN <laughs>